we do have a list of our top five comrades of 2017, do we not? We do. So, these are people who are not politicians, who we feel have in some way furthered the discourse. Aaron, if you want to kick off. Let's, let me, I'll kick off, right? So we've got number, let me get this up. Number five, we've got Ed Sheeran. What? Ed Sheeran, let's get a picture of Ed Sheeran. I, up. we didn't discuss this. No, no, you... it's Ed Sheeran, it's comrade Ed Sheeran. Did you know Ed Sheeran's a comrade now? Leave it I love his music, you know his music? I love his music, I always liked his music. It's very catchy. This is the difference between someone in their 20s and someone in their 30s. Number five, we have Jamie Adenuga. J-M-E, thank you. That isn't Ed Sheeran. Thank fuck for that. I mean, he's a lot better looking, right? A lot better looking. And a lot more talented. You know he grew up in my ends? Oh, really? Yeah. He, him and his family moved to Palmer's Green. They went to Winchmore School. I remember when Sirius came out, we were all very excited. The reason why uh, Jamie is number five and not Ed Sheeran mm. is that I feel that Grime for Corbyn stepped up where True. the political classes fell apart. And what they did was take on that role of political and civic education of the youth. And I think that's paid dividends in terms of a unusually high youth turnout. Yeah. No, Grime for Corbyn was massive. It yeah. will go higher. And I think what they've also done is show that you don't need a very lazy form of identity politics in order to see the interests of young, working class, people of colour being reflected in the Labour Party policy. Jeremy Corbyn is probably, you know, the oldest and whitest dude I've seen in a long time, but he's doing a damn good job of appealing right. to young people of colour. Right. Number four, who have we got? We've got Lily Madigan. Do you so, want to say something about Lily Madigan? So, Lily so Madigan... A, a late comer to the list? A very, uh, you know, a new entry yeah. in uh, the Navarro Media top comrade charts. Lily Madigan is a 19-year-old Labour Party activist, I think based in Rochester. She's yep. the women's officer, and she is spectacularly talented, a real asset to the movement. She unfortunately has come under a huge amount of fire from the right-wing gutter press, aided and abetted by even so-called voices of the left and radical feminists because she's trans and said that a trans woman has no place in the movement, and we at Navarra Media could not disagree more. She has held herself with grace, poise, a political intelligence that I don't have now at 25. She's what, 18, 19? 19. I mean, as a teenager, you know, obviously nobody should ever be subjected to that, but at 19 and to respond like that is very commendable. So congratulations. Um, Top comrade. I don't think anybody could have, uh, could have responded any better to that kind of nonsense, to be honest. Would you like to introduce our third top comrade? We've got Big Nev. Big Nev. We've got Neville Southall. Uh, I must be honest, my first memories of Neville Southall were the 1995 FA Cup final for Everton. I think Graham Stewart scored the winning goal. Maybe it was Paul Rideout. I think it was Graham Stewart. And, yeah, I just thought of him as kind of like a has-been goalkeeper playing for Wales and Everton. Turns out, he fucking hates the Tories. <laughs> and he just loves tweeting kind of weird, woke haiku about skeletons. <laughs> I don't quite get it. But, I mean, it's kind of cool. And I'm it's certainly unexpected. Completely for, and you know what I really love about Neville Southall? Go on. Is that he is so willing to learn. And so he's been educating himself on trans issues. Mm. And he's learning what words like cisgender mean. And he's just incredibly open to new ideas. And I find myself incredibly charmed by this. Mm. May I introduce our second top comrade of 2017? Please do. Again, another new entry is Tarana Burke. Now, you might not have heard the name Tarana Burke. Hopefully that's changed in the last couple of weeks, but you may not have heard her name. You've definitely heard of the movement that she started well over a decade ago. Hashtag Me Too. So while the hashtag Me Too was popularized around the time of the uh, Weinstein revelations, as many women in Hollywood came forward with their accounts of sexual harassment, abuse and violence, this phrase, me too, as a way of creating a sense of solidarity and sisterhood, um, actually stems from the activism done by Tarana Burke. She was working with young girls. Um, this came from uh, working at a youth camp where a girl who'd been intensely troubled, uh, socially isolated and excluded later said, hang on, 
I was the victim of mm. sexual abuse. And Tarana Burke said, why couldn't you just say me too? And so it was really kind of drawn from that kind of emotional moment and it's found its rebirth. And I think it's really important to celebrate Tarana Burke as well as all those brave women who have come forward with their experiences of sexual violence. Because so far, and this is not to take away from their experiences at all, those women who've been most prominent have been very wealthy, they've been generally white, and that I think that's why they've been listened to in this way. Whereas actually what Tarana Burke's work shows is that uh, those well-placed women are only able to um, reach that kind of cultural tipping point because of the years of largely unrecognised work done by women of colour in the community. Who was there? was a Latino cleaner and um, it was a French politician. Oh, uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn. Strauss-Kahn, that's right, when he was at the IMF previously. Mm -hmm. Do you know her name? I can't recall her name. And that shows mm. you the difference, right, between very prominent, very powerful man. Uh, and obviously, if you look at the way that her allegations were responded to in her knees, different era, okay, fine, but also, like you say, different kinds of people are making the claims. So, our top comrade. Top comrade, who do you think it is? Um, I don't know. Begins with a J. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn? Nope. Uh, John McDonald. It was Jarul. 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 This is the model, by the way, for the Navarra IRL event. <laughs> Fire festival. It was beautiful. So, in case you guys have forgotten, because it's been a wa very wavy couple of weeks, at least for us. Yeah, it has been. Yeah, I mean, so, I haven't left. The, I didn't leave the house until today since Navarra passed. Man's just been in his bedroom turning up to DNB mm. on his ones. Mm. But Ja Rule, who uh, had organised, I think it was something like $10,000 or $12,000 a ticket, a luxury festival in the Caribbean. Mm. So all these very wealthy white American teens got flown out, expecting a five-star festival experience. Instagram models all over yeah, the yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. Migos performing an exclusive mm. set. What they found was disaster relief tent, um, some plasticky cheese sandwiches, passports got stolen, people started passing out. And at one point, I think they were surrounded by feral wolves. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a radical redistribution of wealth really looks like. Comrade Jar Rule. And for anyone out there who doubts his dedication to the cause and says, well, look, he was just running a scam. One, I don't know, I've said this for a long time, scamming is counter hegemony. And two, can we pull up this tweet from Ja Rule? Radical criminality. What's this? Social media has ruined socialism. Oh my God. 17th of October, Is that actually real? That is a real Ja Rule tweet. What a fucking great guy. No wonder he's our comrade of the year. <laughs>